Hi everyone and I hope that you're all doing well. The topic that we're going to be talking about today is something that is extremely close to the heart of the Lord because this is the sin that has stained the modern Christian church and this is the reason why so many people who are in the church they are ending up in hell. So when I say that so many people who are in the church are ending up in hell, I'm not giving an opinion. I'm saying something that Jesus Christ showed me. He showed me this years ago and the Lord told me, he, he, he said to me that, look, people are falling from the church into the pit of hell. And he said that it is because the preachers are not speaking the truth. They cannot rebuke the sin that is in the very open and the sin that I want to talk about today that has stained the modern Christian church. It is the sin of immodest dressing. It's most especially among women, although it also affects men. But this is the sin that has stained the church and that so many preachers have failed to rebuke. But this is something that the Lord does not take lightly. Sometimes when you start to talk about immodest dressing, then people get, uh, get defensive and then they say, oh, you don't just focus on the clothes. Somebody can be a hypocrite and dress all modestly. And that is true. I have a video where uh, I have a video titled the two paths, you know, uh, Satan's two paths to hell. And that's what the Lord told me that this was this is something that Satan wants for the church. It's either they should be completely worldly, dressing immodestly and all those things, or they should cover up their body, uh, but just end up being religious. Like you cover up your body, but you don't even have a prayer life. You do not know the Lord. You are not filled with the Holy Spirit. All that you do is you just want to belong to this group of people or organization. So on the outside, you dress modestly. But inside, because you do not have the Spirit of God, you do not have a prayer life, you don't have a relationship with Jesus. So the result of that is you cannot bear good fruit. So inside, you are filled with sin. You are filled with lust. You find that you're still watching pornography, but you are dressing modestly outside. You're covering up your body, but you're, you are watching pornography. You are still engaging in sexual sin, like masturbation and fornication adultery and that is another path to hell that satan has prepared for those people who first of all run away from his path uh, which is the 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 openly open worldliness whereby you're just open about it like you're not even trying to pretend so he prepares a second path that is why the bible says that no man can enter the kingdom of heaven unless he has been born again you need to be born of the Spirit of God. You cannot just cover up your body and then just sit and think that you can live a holy life. You have to be connected to the true vine who is Jesus Christ. And that is when you're going to be able to bear the complete fruit that Jesus is looking for. And only those people are going to inherit the kingdom of heaven. Yes, it's very important. You need to cover your body. If you're a, a child of God, don't go and dress immodestly. You are going to go to hell. And this is something that I want to talk about. When, when, I, shared, when I shared about all the other things that Jesus Christ had shown me about hell, the things Jesus showed me that were leading Christians to hell, like secular entertainment, all these other sins that are leading people to hell. But I did not talk about the sin that is in the church when it comes to how you dress. And the Lord Jesus Christ rebuked me. And I had to repent. And I had to go back and tell the people what the Lord had, had shown me. And this is not even something that is supposed to be secret. This is something that we are just supposed to know. Normally, as children of God, this is something that we were just supposed to know. But the problem is that we were born in a generation that has normalized, uh, that has normalized being sexualized. 
we, we were born in a generation that has normalized being sexualized, whereby everything, you know, everything they put in the movies, in all the songs, it's all meant to, to be sexually appealing. And so we grow up thinking, oh, this is normal. Like I can dress like this, there's nothing wrong. And so uh, the majority of the people, even those who profess Christ, they dress immodestly. They wear clothes that reveal part of their body that they are not supposed to reveal. And it's a serious thing to the Lord. And the Lord Jesus Christ gave me a message when we were praying and the spirit of the Lord took over my body and he started to give us prophetic messages. And the Lord said, go and tell them. One of the things the Lord said, he said, go and tell them go and tell them that Jesus Christ says stop dressing like prostitutes if you really are my daughters because it breaks my heart to pieces to tiny pieces and the Lord said who has bewitched you because Jesus is not a worldly God Jesus cares and I remember the Lord even said, what, what did you think I meant when I said that you are the light of the world? Is the world going to look at your heart? Because the verse that people use, the verse that people use to support immodest dressing in the church, they say, look, God says that he looks at the heart. But when you actually read the verse where God was talking about looking at the heart during when, when God had sent Samuel, to anoint David to be king. And Samuel was looking at how well built all, all of David's brothers were. He was looking at how well built David's older brother was and thinking, oh, this one looks like a king. And God said, I don't look at someone the way a human being looks at a person. I see the heart. So God was not even talking about clothes. He was saying, the king that I have chosen is someone who doesn't look like a king. You know, he is so young. He is so small. He is the youngest among the brothers. You would expect God has chosen the oldest. He, that verse was not talking about clothing. But when we come to the book of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 7 verse 10, the Bible says that, And there a woman met him with the attire of a harlot and a crafty heart. So the, this verse is talking about a seductress who went out on the street looking for a man that she was going to seduce. And the Bible describes this woman, it describes her clothing that she wore the attire of a harlot. In short, she wore the clothing of a prostitute. The clothing that you can only expect to be on a prostitute. And what is the clothing of a prostitute? It's clothing that is meant to draw sexual attention to yourself where you want everybody to see parts of your body that are not supposed to be seen by everyone and you know when it comes to immodest dressing so many women uh, they like to say no i don't dress uh, because i don't dress this way because i'm trying to draw men's attention to my body i just dress like this for myself i just want to look good you know that is what many uh, women say, but that is not the truth. That is not the truth. Actually, uh, women who don't dress immodestly, you find that when you, are, when you, when you come to interact with uh, the ladies who dress immodestly, you find that they, they start to say, oh, you've got nice legs. Why don't you show them off? Or they start to say, oh, you've got nice this and that. Why don't you show it off? You know, you dress, uh, wear something that is going to show them off. But why do you want to show them off? You know, people dress like that because they want people to say, oh, you look nice. Or they want, they want people to be drawn to them because of their body. Like you are drawing unnecessary attention. You want to cause people to lust after you. And you can lie to yourself about the reason why you are dressing immodestly. But it is a very serious sin to the Lord. And it is the sin that has been ignored. And it is the sin that is leading people to hell. And Jesus Christ doesn't joke with that. In the Garden of Eden, 
when Adam and Eve first sinned, they got fig leaves and covered themselves. God had to, had to make them garments from animal skin to cover their bodies because the way that they covered was not good enough. You know, they did not cover their body modestly enough. The Bible says that if you look at a woman to lust after her, you have already committed adultery with her. And if the reason that man has lusted after you as a woman is because you are dressed in clothes that reveal private uh, areas, you are dressed in clothes that reveal areas of your body that are supposed to be private, and somebody lusts after you, you are also guilty. It's not just the person who has lusted after you, but to the Lord, you are prostituting yourself because you want to draw sexual attention to yourself. You wear these clothes so that when people look at you, they're supposed to appreciate you in a sexual way. And to the Lord, that is prostitution. Those people may not physically touch you. Those people may not physically uh, commit fornication or adultery with you but they have committed it in their minds and you are also guilty because you prostituted yourself after just after i received the baptism of the holy spirit and i wore the clothes that i was always wearing throughout this time i wore the same clothes that i was always wearing and then i i remember i, I just went to get something uh, at a grocery store and all along the way, I felt like I was completely naked. I felt like I had just gone out in public naked. And this was something that I had never felt before. This was something that, you know, like I had worn these things. I wasn't even convicted. Why? Because our conscience has been seared by the sin of this world. Because when you see something so often, it becomes normal. You no longer even feel guilty from the time you are a child. They are always displaying all these naked women on TV. You know, the adverts, it's, all the adverts are full of naked women. Music is full of naked women. You know, all, all the TV shows are full of naked women. How can this child grow up to become a woman who knows that her body is not supposed to be publicly displayed? It, is, it only takes the spirit of God because you have been seeing something over and over and over and they have mind controlled you such that you're going to say, I don't even feel guilty. The Holy Spirit is not convicting me. Yes, because your conscience has been seared by the sin. So now you cannot feel guilty. But when the Spirit of God comes and dwells in you, then that's when you're going to be able to know that you are in sin. And the Bible says that God is going to send his angels to gather everything that causes offense. Every cause of offense, that's what the Bible says. And again, Jesus says that it's better for you to have a large stone tied around your neck with a rope and you are thrown into the ocean than for you to cause someone else to sin. So when you dress in an immodest manner, you are drawing attention to yourself, you know, in a sexual way, and you are causing men to lust after you. They have a separate account with God. Sometimes people uh, justify immodest dressing and say, oh, men are always going to lust after you whichever kind of way that you're dressed. If they lust after you and you are dressed modestly, you, you cannot share in that sin you are not guilty before god they are the ones who are going to have an account with god but if you are dressed you are half dressed you are naked then men last after you you are as guilty as they are because to the lord you prostituted yourself you are wearing the attire of a harlot this woman in the book of proverbs the bible says that she wore the attire of a harlot so Solomon, just by looking at, at the woman and looking at what she wore, he knew this attire belongs to a harlot. It doesn't belong to a godly woman. There are clothes that do not belong to a godly woman. They just belong to a harlot. And this is 
the sin that has been forgotten in the church. People think that, oh, as long as I pray, as long as I prophesy, as long as I'm singing for the Lord, I'm worshiping, you know, I'm crying in the church. You know, the Holy Spirit touched me and I'm crying and you think that you're going to the kingdom of heaven, but this is very serious to the Lord. You cannot enter the kingdom of heaven if you are still dressed in the attire of a harlot. You cannot enter the kingdom of heaven when we know that the Lord doesn't like immodest dressing, then we try to be somewhere in the middle. Like you don't want to wear something really short, but again, you don't want to wear something really long, you know, because you don't want to stand out. So you are like, well, let me just wear something just right there on the knees. And then you find that when you, are, when you start to walk, then you find that your skirt or your dress, it starts to move up. Then you find that, oh, uh, a little part of your of your thighs is now exposed. I remember I used to go through that as well. Like when I had just surrendered to the Lord and then I would be like, so let me wear uh, a skirt or a dress that is right there on the knee. But you're going to find that when you, when you sit down, it's going to move up. And then the Holy Spirit would be so grieved. I would feel so terrible. And I would just, Keep praying like, Lord, please forgive me. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. But then you find that the next time again, you wear something right there on the knee and you want to get in the car and you just lift one, one foot and you find that all oh, your thighs are exposed. They are out. You know, so or you, you are walking and, it's, and the wind starts to blow. And because your, your, your dress just ends right there on the knee, you find that the, you find that you, your dress keeps constantly blowing up and your thighs are all out and it's not a pleasant feeling you know it, it really grieves the spirit of God I remember like when I used to go through that I remember I would be like Lord forgive me all the time I would be like repenting all the time until one day I just said you know what I've had enough I just went to my closet I got all the clothes that just end right there on the knee or just below the knee. I just got them all out. Like, I don't want to constantly be grieving the Spirit of God. I don't want to do that. I want to be obedient to God because it would be a waste of time. Like, you are living uh, the immodest lifestyle the the lifestyle of dressing half naked like the women of the world and then you come and you just wear something right there on the knee and you find that you are still naked and then you find that you wasted your time you know because to the lord you were still exposing your body immodestly it doesn't matter even if it's just a little it doesn't matter and sometimes people feel like because worldly people uh they are living so much of their cleavage outside like to you know like to draw uh, sexual attention to themselves and then a godly woman goes and she 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 just she just dresses in a way that is going to just leave just a little bit of her cleavage out but to the lord it's just the same so the lord doesn't want us to waste our time we have to be completely surrendered to the lord like we cannot do half surrender, otherwise we're going to find that we're wasting our time. We're wasting our time. A city on the hill cannot be hidden. So sometimes uh, because we live in a world that, has, that praises nakedness, we live in a world whereby if a woman takes a picture of herself half naked and she uploads it on the social media, you're going to find that she's going to have a lot of likes. Okay, people love nakedness, people love immodesty, people love sin, people love the things that God hates. And so, even godly women, like, get tempted to say, let me be, at least, let me not go too much, you know, let me not be too modest, at least I don't want to, to stand out, I don't want to stand out too much. But Jesus said that a city on a hill cannot be hidden. If you are going to be in complete obedience to Jesus in the way that you dress, I can assure you, you will stand out. You are going to stand out among everyone else. 
everyone else is going to wonder what is so different about you. Everyone else is going to start asking you questions like, like why do you dress the way that you do? Why don't you wear this and that? That is inevitable. And that is why we are not supposed to seek the love from the world, the praises of men that are perishing, you know, or those praises that are so empty. It's better, it's better to get the praises that come from the only true God, not from people who are going to praise you today and you are in hell tomorrow because they praise your nakedness. They praise you because you are dressed half naked and it is displeasing to the Lord. So don't try to be on the middle because you're going to find that you still perish. The dressing of a harlot is clothing that draws sexual attention to yourself. Clothing that is too tight because you want to show off your figure. Clothing that is transparent because you want to show private areas of your body, you know, like, or just immodest clothing. Sometimes uh, uh, like they will, it, will, it will be like a long dress or a long skirt, then it's going to have a slit all the way to your thighs. Or it's going to be a, a, a type of clothing that is hugging your figure, you know, like to show it off, like to show off your, your shape to people. And all those things are clothing of a harlot that we are not supposed to take part in because it is leading people to hell. That is prostitution to the Lord. Imagine if Jesus put such a high standard for men and said that if you look at a woman lustfully, you have already committed adultery just by looking. How much more also for a woman who dresses in a, in a, in a way that is meant to draw uh, sexual attention to your body and then you go out. You have prostituted with each and every man on the street who is going to be staring at you. The Bible says that don't take part in the abomination of the heathen nations. Don't partake of it. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. The clothing of a harlot has no business on the body of a daughter of Jesus Christ. And this is the sin that many pastors are going to be guilty of because they have failed to rebuke it. You cannot turn a blind eye to sin because a preacher is called to rebuke sin and lead men to repentance. So when you see people, they are living in this sin, so openly in sin, and you are failing to rebuke them just because you don't want to offend. And you want to make it seem like, oh, they, they, you know, like everything is okay. Yet you do not care for the soul of that person. Those people whom you don't want to offend, when they go to hell, do you think they are going to think you are such a good pastor? You know, are they going to think you are such a good person? Are they going to think you are, when they die and they go to hell and they realize, oh, this preacher, you know, was deceiving me. This preacher was deceiving me and now I'm in hell. It's better to give a person an opportunity to repent. The Bible says that a city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Once you are a child of God, you cannot be hidden. If you try to be hidden, the only way is to turn off the fire. The only way that, that you can be hidden is to extinguish the fire, turn off the light. That's the only way. Imagine you're, you're, you are walking in a dark place and you have a torch. Can you be hidden? The only way to hide is to turn off the torch. You switch it off. That is the only way. As long as you have the light, you cannot be hidden. Why can't you be hidden? Because the world is full of darkness. The world is full of sin. And if you live in holiness and righteousness, you are going to find that you are different from everyone else around you. And that is the light Jesus wants you to shine. That is what Jesus is meaning 
when he says you are the light of the world your life is going to be different the way you speak is going to be different even the way you dress is going to be different and people are going to notice that there's something different about you and that is a witness against them if they do not repent that is a witness because you have shown the light and Jesus says that you are the light of the world and you are the salt of the earth and if salt loses its saltiness it is good for nothing that is what the Lord says okay so if a Christian what makes you the light what makes you the salt it is holiness if you lose that light if you lose the saltiness, if you lose the thing that makes you different from everyone around you, then you become good for nothing for the kingdom of God. In the kingdom of God, you cannot belong there anymore. It means that you have now backslidden. You have turned off the light. That is the only way the light will not show. You cannot hide it. So you do not need to be ashamed. The people who need to be ashamed, it's people who are walking naked. But why should you be ashamed of dressing modestly just because everyone around you is dressing half naked? Just because everybody is committing the sin, it doesn't mean that it has changed how God sees it. Just because everybody is committing the sin, it doesn't mean that it has stopped to be seen in the eyes of God. Narrow is the way that leads to life. The Bible tells us that the majority of people are walking in the broad way to hell. And this is one of the ways that so many people, even people who are in the church, people who are singing, people who are worshiping, they are walking in the broad way. Because they have made themselves, to, they have prostituted themselves. They have put on the attire of a harlot and you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven in the attire that is meant to draw sexual attention to yourself. You want everybody to prostitute with you. You want everybody to, to appreciate your body in a sexual way. That is being a prostitute. And you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. It is a very serious sin that people are ignoring. And I was saying that, you know, when, when the, the Bible even says that, you know, preachers, they are going to be judged with a higher standard because God has put so many people under you, people whom, whom you are teaching. And if you fail to teach them the truth, then God will hold you accountable. Because this is sin that is in the open, it's not hidden. Even the person who is dressed immodestly knows that they are dressed immodestly. It's only that they comfort themselves because they look at everybody else. So I remember like uh, one of the questions that I get like when it comes to modest dressing and then people ask me that uh, doesn't mean that like we cannot go to a beach doesn't mean we cannot go to a beach because it means that we cannot wear a swimming costume and go to the beach and all that. And I remember I had a discussion with somebody like some years ago on this topic and they were saying, it doesn't mean I cannot go now to a beach. I cannot go to a beach, you know, just because I'm a Christian. If going to the beach, if going to the beach requires you to be half naked, then it's better you don't even go there because hell is so terrible. The Bible says that if your eye causes you to sin, cut it off. It's better for you to enter the kingdom of heaven with just one eye than for you to perish in hell. So if going to the beach requires you to dress half naked or requires you to undress, then cut it off. It's better you don't even go to the beach than for you to go there and end up in hell. It's better you don't even go there if you are saying that you have to, you have to undress, you have to be naked for you to be at a beach. The kingdom of heaven 
is not something we, we are just toying around. It's better you don't even have anything here on earth, but you escape hell. Because once you are in hell, and Jesus Christ has shown me hell because he wanted me to come and warn his people. Let me tell you something about hell. Once you are in hell, just one second in hell is going to feel like you have never laughed before in your entire life. That is how you're going to feel. All the happiness, all the joy, it's going to seem like it's just a distant dream, like it never happened. Life on earth is going to seem like it was actually a paradise. That is why Jesus is trying to make us understand how terrible hell is. When he says, whatever is causing you to sin, cut it off. It's not worth it. Nothing is worth it. It's not worth it for you to be dressing immodestly just for people to say, oh, you look so nice, or oh, this and that. Just for people to give you compliments. Those compliments mean nothing when you're in hell. It's better to get the praise that comes from the one true God than the praises of men. It's not worth it for you to be dressing immodestly just because you want to fit in with your friends because you, you say, oh, everybody's going to wonder why I'm the only one who's modest. It's not worth it. The kingdom of heaven, the Bible says that it's like that precious pearl that a man finds, then he goes away and tells everything he has just so that he can have that pearl. That is how the kingdom of heaven is. Follow Jesus is going to cost you. It will cost you everything. We should be ready to just lose everything as long as we have Jesus Christ because he is that precious pearl that is worth losing everything for. I remember the first time when I had an encounter with the Lord and the Lord said to me that I gave up glorious heaven to come and walk on this filthy earth just to, just to come and die for you. Do you love me that much as well? Are you willing to give up everything for my sake? That was what the Lord told me and what he asked me. And since that time, I have had to surrender everything at his feet. My life, my reputation, friendships, everything. It had to be surrendered to the Lord so that my life can become only what the Lord wants. Not my will, but his will. All these things seem like so important when we are still on the earth like oh what are people going to think of me if i wear a modest dress or oh, what are people going to think i'm not going to be too fashionable but all those things just vanish into nothing and this sin is something that the lord takes very seriously it's something it's a topic that is truly upon the heart of the lord and it is something the lord jesus christ has instructed me to speak of it and to keep speaking of it the church, the modern church, has greatly fallen. And the Spirit of God is gone. And all that they are left with is the excitement. Without that real impact of the Holy Spirit, which is holiness, because He is holy. And He brings holiness where He is. But the reason why the church is so void of holiness is because the spirit of god is already gone so you cannot be holy without the holy spirit the bible says that present your body as a living sacrifice to the lord your body is the temple of the holy spirit your body is not meant to be prostituted when you are a child of god because god will not hold you guiltless we see women of god you know christian women we see christian women wearing shorts wearing miniskirts we see christian women wearing clothes that are displeasing to god strapless clothes and many people are doing this in ignorance 
because they are looking up to these people who are looking up to these people who are looking up to these people which is why we have to look to the lord and which is why it is our duty to train our children in the fear of god from the time when they are young the bible says don't prostitute your daughter don't teach your daughter to wear the clothing of a harlot you will not be guiltless before the lord and don't be silent don't be silent when you are a preacher and you are preaching to people and these people are ignorantly wearing the clothing of a harlot god is not going to hold you guiltless many preachers will be held accountable to the lord for this for failing to speak against worldliness it is not normal to prostitute your body it is not normal and it is not beauty but to the lord that is harlotry that is prostitution and you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven